All right team, welcome back to another video. Loads going on in today's video. We're gonna be asking, should goalkeepers be doing any running? We're off to see Frankie, we have a little bit of a chat with her, and we tell you guys some cool stuff that's been happening and will be happening very soon, but that comes later on. Right now, time for training, and the question, should goalkeepers be doing some running? Oh, so today, we've got the African Violet on. My old training top from Loughborough. We've got the running shoes, we're gonna be doing them up because today, for my session, I'm going out on a longer run. Now, we've all faced that question, should goalkeepers be doing running? And normally, during pre-season, when all our teammates are doing longer runs, we're the first ones to say, I'm a goalie, I shouldn't be doing the running. There is some truth in that. As goalkeepers, our work is slightly different. You don't wanna be doing loads of endurance work, like a centre midfielder, for example, because most of the work that we do is very short, very sharp, anaerobic type work. Think of a double save or walking for a long period of time and then being called into action in a really intense period. That's the majority of stuff that you should be training for and as a result your training should kind of mirror that work. However, Longer runs can be beneficial if you want to increase your overall aerobic capacity. There's also a little bit of mental resilience in there, especially if you like testing yourself. I wouldn't recommend doing loads of long runs all the time, but every now and again, like today, it's sometimes good to get the trainers on and head out for a little bit of a longer run. What I'm gonna be doing in today's run is four minutes on, one minute off. But four minutes of work, one minute of rest, broken down into about five or six intervals, and that's gonna be my session for today. I've got the whoop on, so you're gonna see the data at the end of it. Heading into pre-season pretty soon, so it'll be a good indicator to see how the off-season training's gone and where the baseline is as we step into pre-season. So first up, we need to set the whoop. So we need to have a look if we can find running. There we go. Cool. Heart rate, that can't be right. As that gets down to where it's supposed to be. We're going for a run, start that activity. Yes, so that's gonna track our heart rate as we go. Next up, we've got the interval timer. So as we can see, 30 minutes, let's just have a quick look. We're gonna be working for four minutes on, one minute recovery, six sets, which is about 30 minutes. The rest of that stuff we don't really need to know about. So that's going to be set, ready to go. Work for four minutes. If you say so. Right, let's go. So in the recovery bit, that one minute break between the intervals, just focusing on bringing my heart rate, focusing on bringing my heart rate back down. So if we have a look at the whoop, currently in and around 160. So aerobically, you're kind of working 60 to 80% of my max heart rate. And in this break, I'm just focusing on bringing that number down as much as I possibly can. This is where it's applicable to goalkeeping. Imagine you've just done a high intense bit of work and then you're not so in action anymore. You wanna bring that heart rate back down, ready to go again when you need it. And as I say, this is, oh, five seconds. And as I say, I do this very rarely. It's not even something I'd do weekly, every so often. For me, it's more of a mental thing. I like being outside, I like running. I like getting in that flow and just cruising, hearing the birds, just hearing your own breath. It's not something I'll put regularly in my training plan for a week. Obviously goalkeeper training, gym work, plyometrics, those are things really specific to my position. This is just something I'll throw in every now and again, just to test myself, to enjoy it a bit. See how I'm feeling. You get a feel for your body. And I really feel in tune with it when I run. <laughs> Five seconds. And with that, let's get running again. <laughs> And we're back. 
finally. Enjoyed that. As I say, not something that I would do all the time, and especially in season, probably wouldn't do any of that. But during the off season, during pre-season, very nice to get out there, get on a run, push yourself a little bit, but that's just me because I'm weird, I enjoy it. Let's have a look at the WHOOP data. So as we can see, 44 minutes for the run, you can definitely see the intervals in there. As I say, trying to get your heart rate back down in those minute breaks. And then that last one right at the end, really pushing it up a hill as well. Absolute killer. That's where we hit the max heart rate, which is actually pretty high. Anaerobic work in there as well. But a strong session. Enjoyed that. Anyway, right now, going to have a cool down, a little bit of a stretch, have a shower, and then we're heading out. Because me and Frankie, we're off to the driving range. And we're going to show you our golf skills which are not the best. That was really good. Big slice. You want some custard with that slice? I love custard slices. <laughs> That's been, I don't think we even saw the ball there. <laughs> I'm just on the other side of the fence. <laughs> that was a good one. Does the glove help? Yeah. Superpowers in the glove. Michael Jackson. See, 175. 193. That's more like it. It's going to be a while until we make an appearance on Golf Life. But Speak for yourself. Tubes, if you're watching. We're getting better. Oh my word. What a shot. Oh yes. Oh, you got a flag there. Oh, I got a flag. Get in. What a shot. That was a great shot. <laughs> that was a great shot. That was a great shot. So fresh from beating Frankie at golf, quite comprehensively I'd say. Are you going to start with that? Yeah, I'm going to start with that. I thought, why don't we have a chat with Frankie about how she feels about moving her life all the time. Having a partner with a very flaky career. Hello. Hello. How are you feeling in here? <laughs> I'm feeling okay. Yeah? I'm feeling... Um, actually weirdly okay i think i'm just really excited for a new adventure now so the perception of football obviously is that it's a lovely job everyone would love to have it unfortunately not everybody earns multi-millions <clears throat> and lives uh, very close to where your family are from your friends how do you feel having to move around uproot your life every season potentially and once you've found a place that you like, like we did with Petia, mm. and then suddenly we're not there anymore and you have to start all over again and find new people and new places and how how is that for you as a as a partner of a player rather than me as a player myself? I don't know, because it's like when you're doing it, like when we went to Petia, yeah, that was like a new unknown and a new adventure and actually that was the scariest one so far because we I'd never even been to Sweden on holiday, so I didn't know what that was gonna be like. And it's funny you mentioned like the perception of being a footballer is that you, like you say, you have loads of money and you just live like next door to everyone mm. that you know. That's the only side to it which is really hard in terms of not being a multimillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of not living near everyone. Mm. But I understand that that's, it's just what we do. That's our little path to 
our big path to mm. get in to the top level and actually it's really fun and I don't think that many people have that opportunity so say you'd signed with United mm. that would have been amazing but equally we would never have had all the experiences we've had and for me it's not really that um yeah it's scary in its own right but because we're doing it together it's always really fun and it's an adventure for us mm. And it's not just about the football. How do you feel now having done it a few times and potentially doing it again, going to mm -hmm. a new place versus when you did it for the first time, leaving home without any mm. idea of what it's like to move around with football? That's true. So moving abroad full stop actually weirdly isn't that big a deal anymore mm. for me. Mm. So like say, unless it was somewhere ridiculously far mm. away, mm. but because it's normally like Europe, mm. for me it's just exciting. The thing for me that I'm aware of is I have to start, for me, I have to start from scratch with my social life again, mm. which sounds so silly, mm. but it's like if you think about when you move abroad, you automatically have a group of men who potentially could be really good friends, but even if they're not, you've got people you see every day. Yeah, with whereas, at least one common interest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And whereas for me, it's obviously like, I don't know anyone and usually it's sometimes mm. a girlfriend of one of your mm. football players who of teammates who you know who we introduce we're introduced and like we might meet up but that's quite a big daunting thing when you've made such a wonderful group of friends mm. to leave it and start again mm. and actually I've got a lot better I found it making an effort to make those relationships because before I like I, f I think I probably went there thinking we probably won't stay that long so mm. Mm. so that's one thing that I'm like wherever we go next that's something that's on my mind that I need to be really mm. good at meeting people and you know creating a community for yeah. me mm. and for us so yeah I think that's important to know because especially you guys that want a career in football or have a career in football or just follow people with careers in football I think it's easy to see the great bits but there is a lot involved which can be quite tough and especially for the loved ones of players like mm. Frankie I think not a lot is said about the stuff that ultimately they have to go through to facilitate us doing something that we love. Also um, on Instagram there's a really good um, little community called the Lifestyle Club which I got in touch they got in touch with me as well um, because it's basically for like the family members of the footballer so obviously like Con just said you don't really think about them and a lot of the time the focus isn't on integrating them into the obviously the club but into you know their new life so if you are if you do need help or you need if you feel like you need a community the lifestyle club are really good if you have someone that you love that shares the ride with you it makes it a whole lot easier and speaking of which some of you might have seen over on instagram before but yeah me and frankie now engaged Yay. so that's very exciting <laughs> I'm not sure how we're going to plan a wedding when we don't even know where we're going to be we don't need to think about that in the next two, three months. But but I hope you found that interesting because it's not something that's talked about a lot. So no, thank you, not. Frankie. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for everybody. sharing your feelings with everybody here today. Thank you. <laughs> Those of you who are still listening, you didn't fall asleep. So that's it for the video, guys. And that is it for the off-season diary series. I hope you guys have enjoyed following during the off-season. I can't say too much, but the next video you will be in a new place. Make sure you're tuned in over on social media, on Instagram in particular, where you will hear any news as it happens. We're very excited to share with you guys what is coming next. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and get ready for Keeping Goals Series 7. This week's Patreon of the Week is Adam Douglas. Adam, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for supporting the channel. We wouldn't be able to make the videos without patrons like yourself. So a massive, massive thank you. Thank you for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next one. Look after yourselves. Keep chasing improvement, as always, and I'll speak to you in a bit.